Windows 8 and GNS3, connecting the virtual to physical networks. Let's begin. If you, like me, have updated to Windows 8, you may have noticed a little problem in that GNS3 connecting to a live physical network does not work the same as it used to. Our objective for you and I in this nugget is really simple. We're going to go through the steps in measurable terms of how you and I can connect that virtual world in Windows 8 over to the live network. So to make sure that you and I are on the same page, we have a computer that's running Windows 8. It's our host machine. It has some kind of local area network connectivity, which likely has internet availability as well. And GNS3 is already installed. So these are the steps that we're going to follow specifically. And instead of just reading them off or talking about them, let me walk you through actually doing them. Our very first step, the hardware wizard. And to do that from a command prompt, you can type in HDWWIZ, press Enter. And that brings up the hardware wizard. From here, you click on Next. And we're going to say, I want to install the hardware manually. I select from a list. We're going to scroll down. And we're going to go down to Network Adapters. Select Network Adapters. Click on Next. On the left-hand side for Manufacturer, we're going to go to Microsoft. And then we're going to scroll down here several times. And we're going to select this Microsoft KM-Test Loopback Adapter. That is, for whatever reason, what they call it inside of Windows 8. So we'll click on Next, and then we click on Next to complete the installation. Now, once that installs, the very next thing to do after this wizard is complete is we are going to reboot the computer. So now that we have this new loopback interface installed and we rebooted, we're going to go back into Control Panel, look at our local area network interface, our real one, whether it's wireless or wired, and we're going to set up internet connection sharing on that wired or wireless real interface. Now to do that, I've brought up Control Panel, and under the Network and Internet, and then Network and Sharing Center, on the left, we can say Change Adapter Settings. And in my case, I have a wireless card that I'm going to set up for internet connection sharing. So I want you to pay special attention to two things. One, this is my real interface, the one I'm using to connect to the internet right now from this host computer. And here's that new loopback interface. And at the moment, it's just set up as a DHCP client. In fact, let's take a quick look at that loopback interface. And if we go to the properties of that interface, and we scroll down to IP version 4, and double click, it's just going to be a DHCP client. Really, it's serving no purpose yet, but it will here in a moment. Let's go back to my real interface. And on the real interface, the Wi-Fi connector in my case, I'm going to right click and go to properties of that. And what we're going to do right here is we're going to set up sharing. So we're going to click on the sharing tab. And I'm going to say, I want to allow other network users to connect through this computer's internet connection and click OK. Now what we'll notice right here, it says, shared, which indicates that sharing. And what's happening in the background is this. What it did was it assigned this loopback address, the IP address of 192.168.137.1. Now you might think, OK, so what? How's that going to help us? Well, what we can do is we can go ahead and we can connect the loopback interface, which we're going to do here in a moment, into GNS3. And then we can have a router logically connect to that loopback interface so now that we've done the internet connection sharing, let me also go back to this loopback interface, go to properties of it. And if we take a look now at IP version 4 details, we can see that IP address that it put there. And this is because of the internet connection sharing. This will be the default gateway that we'll have our router use inside of GNS3. In GNS3, we'll create a brand new project. We'll call this test Win8 for Windows 8. And I'll tell it to go ahead and save the NVRAMs and click OK. And let's bring out a router. So I'll bring out one of the routers I have an iOS image already set up for. And I'm also going to bring out a cloud. And this cloud is going to represent our loopback interface. So to do that, I'm going to double click on the cloud, go to the details of this cloud. And from here, let's go ahead and make it a little bigger so we can see the details. And then from the drop down list, there's our loopback adapter. So we're going to make this cloud represent our loopback adapter. Click Add. Click OK, and now we'll connect the two together. So in GNS3, I'm going to hold down the Shift key and go to the Connections tool and say I want to make a gigabit connection from the router over to the cloud, and it's going to ask me which interface on the cloud, which is our loopback interface. I'm going to turn off the Connection tool, turn on Label so we can see that, and we can also rename this label here, and we can call this Loopback, and place it right on top of the cloud. 
The next step would be to start this up. So I'm going to hit the Go button, and that'll start all these devices. Well, in this case, just R1, which is perfectly fine. And now that that is booting up, let's go ahead and open up a console port using this icon right here. We'll say connect to all devices. In this case, it's just R1. So now we have a console connection over to R1. Now that's booted up, we'll go into configuration mode, interface FA1 slash zero. Let's take a real quick peek just to verify that is the interface. Oh, it's gig one slash zero. So I'll correct that. So we're gonna go to interface gig one slash zero. We'll do a no shutdown. And we'll say IP address of 192.168.137.2 with a 24 bit mask. And let's put in a default route. We'll say IP route to get anywhere that you don't have a more specific route in your routing table, go ahead and use the IP address of 192.168.137.1, which is the IP address of the Loopback interface. And just for grins, let's make sure we can ping that. Because if we can't ping our default gateway, it's not very likely we're gonna have success in pinging devices beyond that. So let's test something on the internet. Let's do a ping of 8.8.8.8. That's a Google's DNS server, let's press enter and we have connectivity. We can also do a trace out to 8.8.8.8. But as we take a look at the second, third, and fourth hop, they're all willing to just to validate that we are going through the internet to 8.8.8.8. And I'm gonna do a control shift six to go ahead and stop that. And check this out, we're going through some service providers with MPLS. Awesome. So in this micro nugget, we took a look at installing a loopback, rebooting the device, setting up internet connection sharing on our physical or real network interface, placing the loopback into GNS as a cloud, using this IP address on our GNS device. In our case, we used R1, and then having that device point to the loopback IP address as a default gateway. And now we have connectivity between our logical GNS running in Windows and the live network. I've had a lot of fun. I appreciate you joining me. I hope this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.